That was a pun. <laughs> They're all puns. All, all of them. Everything. All jokes are puns all if are interpreted puns. the wrong way. <laughs> oh, you meant like, oh, like the road. The chicken's not a road scholar. He was cross it. Got it. Oh, uh, yeah. So we're out for a walk. It is Sunday. What is it? The 28th? The 29th. 29th. It's the first day of Advent. Happy New Year, everyone. It's the first day of Advent. Yeah. Sorry. So tell me how an Advent calendar works, specifically when it's made of wine bottles. Oh, like that Advent calendar. That's like different than Advent. Okay. So an Advent calendar starts on December 1st. Okay. And it, this is a Protestant thing, I gotta say, I gotta say the Advent calendar. Because it starts on December 1st, it's not connected to the liturgical year. Okay. And it's a countdown of the 24 days before in, in December up to Christmas. So the kids have been waiting for Christmas all year. And it's December. Is it Christmas yet? It's, no, no, no. Look at the Advent calendar. This is the first we get one piece of chocolate. Yay! All right. So... Or, or alternatively, as adults, you've been like... Is the year over yet? Is the year over? It's December first. You've got one bottle of wine tonight. <laughs> Here you go. You can make it till tomorrow. And then, oh, 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 it's only the second. It's not over yet. Okay. It's not over. It's the second. Have your next bottle of wine. And so, that's that's the advent calendar situation. So, uh, yeah, we bought a wine advent calendar at Costco. Yeah, boy. And it's been in the closet I'm trying to keep the kids away from it <laughs> not that our kids are heavy drinkers but well no they, they like to the tear bowl. it apart they like and the bowl. pull it apart and, yeah uh, so it's waiting for us there are 24 half bottles of wine yeah now a half bottle is only two glasses yeah no that's not it's actually not that much wine it's uh three, it's 200 some mls I think yeah, yeah. so um, mm-hmm. but I am looking forward to tasting each one of them and actually starting a regimen of drinking <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if our drinking muscles are strong enough actually yeah well we really don't drink very often or very much yes, yes. Um, but uh I think it's not that I want to develop alcoholism, but um, sort of as a practice. I, it's also I know that it helps my stress level. It helps my my bones and muscles. Hey, my it is not an accident. That humans keep alcohol my, around. It's yeah, not an accident. Right to have uh, it brings my heart rate down. It brings my nerves. You know. I feel a little less persecuted. Why are you trying to kill? No one's trying to kill me, man. Why are you short? Uh, well, but the other thing it does is if uh, there is a big, if I have some wine after dinner and then the kids have a huge fight or decide to stage a, a, a sit down protest, a sit down or, or strike, argue about their chores, my inhibitions are down. I'm more likely to, to snap, to snap at them, yell at them. Yeah. So it's a double edged sword, really. It is. Yeah, not in a good way. But, you know, a half of a half bottle probably isn't going to take you over result the Result in anyone the ER going trips. to the ER because Dad yeah. lost it. Dad lost his mind that night. It was really, uh, really tragic. And um, so it's, uh, what time is it? Something. I don't know. It's like, it's almost four o'clock. I, I did not mean to we, be getting... We were trying to get out at three because it's... <laughs> Get the it's pretty the dark by five. It's three forty-seven. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah, no. So it's not the so not quite the walk we hoped. I was already, and Grace was struggling to get herself free of a few things, including our almost two-year-old. Oh, almost two-year-old nurse. Like, he, I don't know. What you know, do you I, want to say about him? He's quite well, a challenge. You know, he's he's actually he is not more challenging than either Joshua or Benjamin were, who were both very challenging. But like. Oh my Jesus, they were challenging. But I, but I will say this. There is this thing, and it's like a two-year-old regression. As they make them ready to like make this large developmental leap, they regress. 
Yeah. It's actually a norm. Every one of our children have done it. Yeah. It's these three boys, Josh, Benjamin, and Malachi, who are a little high strung in a certain way. Yeah. And it's been very pronounced for both of them. So for all three of them, it's been very this very pronounced phase that, where they are suddenly into everything but need to be cuddled all the time and set off by everything and like it's all too much and not enough and all at the same time. Yeah. But no, he's like uh this morning was a good example. So like he woke up and he was all chipper and Chip, cheerful, cheerful and wanted to play games with booping our noses and like giggling, giggling and all that. And we're like, oh, we don't want to get up yet, but, you know. But giggle, giggle. What but it baby? was uh, that was very nice. But the same baby, if you don't allow him to do exactly what he wants or get exactly, exactly what, what he, he wants, wants, when he wants, he it. will turn on you. Just <laughs> like like uh, and. Uh, you were trying to get him down for a nap, and he was dozing off. Dozing and you off. very, you, gently. you know, gently put him down to sleep, and he he immediately started attacking you, like, like screaming and attacking you. Like a little you. whirling, like a like the Tasmanian devil in the cartoon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just Whoa! like, dude, you were asleep. What happened? I was not too long ago. I was trying to take a nap in the bed, and he, like. Uh, came climbing up in the bed and like oh snuggle snuggle was doing this was Tasmanian devil routine and fell backwards on my landed so that the oh, back of his man. skull hit the side of my the head yeah. right at my temple so hard that I heard and felt an something awesome. crack yeah. in there yeah and I'm like what the hell <laughs> just attacked by my infant what and, I mean happened? it was an accident but still yeah. I'm like yeah. And he certainly wasn't malicious. Uh, I don't know. I said it was sore for. I had immediate like migraine symptoms. Like, yeah, and it was sore for a good forty-eight hours. But finally, like, I'm like hoping because you know, I'm reading up on these bones because this is a point at the skull where like five bones come together and it's right, very it's fragile. fragile spot. And there's a big cluster of uh, like veins, veins, you know, under the skull. And if you hit that hard, you can rupture that, and then. It, get a huge hematoma oh well, yeah yeah it's it's really hard to play google doctor you know yeah you can but, really terrify yourself but but i'm like okay what do i need to watch for well i i think he actually gave me a slight concussion you know yeah no. parenting is hard it's not for the faint of heart it's not it's really not um <sighs> so let's go back Simpler times. Let's go back and talk about our uh, successes and how we, what we did and didn't do, and work through what we cooked and all that oh, for Thanksgiving. For Thanksgiving cause oh yeah, yeah. I, so I feel like the I feel like the whole day on balance was a success. But let's go back to like the pregame. Oh, the pregame. Because that included. Monday night, our last shopping outing. Oh, or Friday night. Friday, sorry, Friday night. So like a, a little over a week ago, Friday night, we did our last sho- shopping outing. And I had... It's not quite true. We went on Saturday, too. Right. Well, we couldn't find things on Friday, so we cleaned up what we couldn't get. So we were, we planned... So... We I, really planned this time because yeah, no, we considered it to be a safety issue for definitely... I mean, normally going shopping like close to Thanksgiving would just be... A frustration and annoyance issue. Right. But this time we thought this is a real safety issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did our best to get everything in the house we possibly wanted to cook with. Ideally before Saturday afternoon right. at Costco. Right. Right, so we weren't in that Petri dish. So I did a Friday night run to Costco. Yeah. Friday night, like the hour before they close super quiet always seems to be pretty pretty quiet at, at our costco some some places are crazy it's probably but, yeah sure but our but, costco is really quiet that time so it's like but after between 7 30 and 8 30 yeah if you can get in find everything get out quick it's really uh it's easy and the week before i'd spent uh doing inventory interviewing folks about what they wanted to eat what they wanted to have what the you know? What do you need to need to have for it to be Thanksgiving right. for you? Right. And that came down to a number of specific dishes and so on. We were pretty convinced uh, that because we weren't having anyone from 
outside the household in. We didn't want to do a turkey. We're not doing a turkey. And, we're, we work, I, and, and uh, I, I screwed around so long, I ran out of time to order the prime rib that we've been getting the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So that was off the table. So, yeah. So also... And the prime rib would have been too much. I've been giving money every week to some friends in yeah. need. And so we really didn't have a, enough extra money to, like, order a $100-plus turkey well in advance. You right, know? right. Those, yeah, because the, the, good, the good turkeys, the turkeys you want to eat, those are 150 for our family. For our family, yeah, yeah, large. That's the size and the quality. Yeah, that's $150, so. So we didn't do so, any of yeah, that. We didn't do any of that. But what, we, what we, did we get? So we got some tofurkeys. We did. <laughs> yeah, and so I did this week-long planning session. So I got up early on Friday, well, early for me. And got almost all of it curbside pickup, and a couple of places that were very sparsely um, populated. I went in, and they're usually sparsely populated. I went into those places. Hey, all right. And um, and that was that was. I felt very successful. I was back home by noon, and really, without primarily without a hitch. Yeah. I, I even got some extra tools and, uh, to replace them that had been broken and damaged, or that I didn't even own. And then the the thing that we made, the, I say we, but you did almost all of this, okay? <laughs> Just to give you credit. I did very little, mm -hmm. except some shopping and a little and bit of some prep work. Yeah, up, a little bit of prep work, work but yeah. um, mostly I was just like watching in horror as the kids destroyed our home while you were trying to cook. Yeah. Um, but These things happen. The, uh, t the replacement for the big turkey day, like oh, meat, yeah. meat dish. Was fried chicken, fried from scratch. Was fried chicken, fried, fried from scratch. Fried and buttermilk dipped, you know. Buttermilk dipped and fr deep fried in peanut oil. Right. Gluten-free better, though. This is something we almost never do. <laughs> almost never. Because it's a real safety challenge to keep all the kids out of the kitchen for deep frying. Right. And deep frying is very dangerous. It's it's very dangerous. We really have to keep absolutely vigilant about the kids. Someone has to be in front of the stove for hours. Right? Babysitting the stuff. Right. And um, it's also, you know, it's a technical challenge, right? Yes. And then but we have this large quantity of oil to contend, to contend with. with. Yeah, and I, I, uh, true confessions, I still have to funnel that oil back into the jar. I gotta straighten it and All deal right. with it. So, yeah. That's a that's a chore I'm not a big fan of. But, you know, I'm planning to do um, some uh, cook cookery today, anyhow, so I'll get in there and handle that tonight. Yeah. Alright, we're, uh, we're waiting because there's some some traffic, Tra some heavy traffic up ahead. Yep. Well, for our road, heavy traffic. <laughs> yeah. Well, two cars. Stop. Two cars, like what? Two people? Three so, people? Plus us? Somebody's t bringing in their uh, trash bins. Taking them out, rather. Taking them out. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're on a different pickup day, probably. Yep. Well, that's an idea. You just take them in the car. Huh. <laughs> well, you just have the teenagers just drag them out. They have a pave. Yeah, our kids bitch the whole way. Maybe it's a maybe it's longer. I don't know. Anyway, we we'll have long driveways around here. I guess it's pretty long. Yeah, but it's certainly smoother than our driveway. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, it's long. There's like three three houses down there, three four. Houses. Okay, we're in a kind of a uh, what do you exurban area? I guess. I guess you could call it that. It's not. It's. It's not fully rural. I would not describe it as rural here. But about two miles south of here is rural. Rural, rural. Like real rural. Rural, rural, rural. rural, rural. Yeah. Real rural. Yeah. Um, but this is... This is, you know, I could walk to the highway, you know. There are what used to be farmhouses with some infill water in Modern homes. houses. Okay. This is a beautiful old house here. Just gorgeous. Yeah. Great lines, great bones. And it doesn't have a complicated roof. Nope. <laughs> like, unlike its neighbors. Nubs and <laughs> nubs and spikes and Lord knows what else. Cupolas and hmm. fake everything. Yeah, I know. So. So anyway, so you know we fr so I fried a whole mess of chicken. Like I think I fried uh, six to eight pounds of chicken. 
Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was delicious. I was I was really impressed with the way it came out. And and actually, it's a technical challenge. And like you had to set everything up and kind of stay on top of it. Yeah. But like once you get the rhythm of it, it's it's really straightforward. It's very straightforward. That's why this is a traditional cooking method. Right. Like once you like follow sort of some very basic rules. Um, yeah. It's very easy. When you time everything correctly, it comes out great. It comes out great. <laughs> so. Right. Keep it the right temperature to keep the you know so you got to got to manage the heat, got to manage the time, and then it's just delicious and good. Right. So tell, what did you, day one was desserts? Day, so my first cooking day was Tuesday and I did desserts. And I actually only did a small number of desserts. Um, I did, but the, the one that I'd never tried before that was a, now this was a big technical, technical challenge, oh, yeah. was the um, pecan pie cheesecake. Yeah, cheesecake with pecan pie topping on top yes. of it. Yes, and I, I know you wanted like cheesecake. I made a vegan cheesecake because yeah. the dairy count of this meal was really starting to add up. Right. And Some of us, I just don't do well. Just don't with do dairy, well. It's really a mess. And so the dairy count was adding. So I just I settled early on on doing a vegan cheesecake, a vegan baked cheesecake, yeah. and um, I was very pleased with the outcome of the recipe. It, it had a great flavor. It was good actually. It had a nice sort of tart. Uh, flavor in the the cheesecake part itself Mm -hmm. um it wasn't bad i i was making jokes about uh about vegan cheesecake uh, but it was it was not bad it's not bad and the topping was was delicious Delicious, so blonde so but but i basically had to make these three separate recipes from scratch took all afternoon and combined them yeah so we did the, the crust and then we made cheesecake filling baked that made it and then i had to make a pecan pie but not fill it and there was so much filling and the, there's a sort of sweet spot where the uh, cheesecake has set enough to support the filling without all falling in without falling in <laughs> right. but you don't want it to completely set because you want them to, to like join to, like to bake together bond together to bond yeah. so it can't be set all the way and it can't be unset yeah so Technically um, challenging dish. Yes. So I finally I found the right spot. And since I wasn't using anyone's specific recipe. Yeah. There was a good like uh, true cheesecake recipe for this. I didn't want to use that one because I wanted a different cheesecake. Right. And there's a good uh, topping, but I didn't want to use that one. I wanted actual pecan pie filling. And blah blah blah. So um, so I was kind of adjusting on the fly for some of these things. And but basically, after I'd made the pecan pie filling, I was going to put it all on. And then I was worried it was going to run over and um, damage burn. the crust. Burn and damage the crust so it all falls apart. Yeah. When you, when you finally unmold the thing. All right. So I put on like one third. Okay. And then basically I had a whole pie left over. A pecan pie. So, so I just threw it into a, a pie filling and then baked it. Yeah. So we had a pecan pie too. So it was a bonus pie. Um, then I also made um, a cranberry apple pie. Cranberry yep. apple pie. Now correct me. Is, I thought that was your favorite pie. Is, is there a different pie that you like? Uh, or do you just like pie? I like all kinds of pies. Right, I don't know much, yeah. But I, I, I thought you had a fondness for the cranberry pie. I, yes, anyway. I do. So I made... Uh, but I was, we ate so many desserts, you know, it was like, kind of like... <laughs> anyway. You don't, you don't usually have dessert every single night for a week. Right. Um, but so I made this, the cranberry pie, which is just, just cranberry sauce. Basically, Like, like yeah. homemade cranberry sauce apples and oranges in a pie crust yeah. and you bake it till it sets and it has a nice big slice of orange in the middle yeah it's a, it's a lovely presentation just a delicious pie yeah um no I, I, that was good i yeah. had some of that sort of a long-standing favorite because it, it's a little the the tartness you don't make it overly sweet no the I tartness don't helps <laughs> helps like uh it's digestive if you will right well it, it it's a nice contrast with the other things that are really often sweet and very sweet and very rich yeah. yeah you also made a a uh squash pie Oh yes, I made. Uh, oh, was it squash? No, that was a sweet potato. That was Sorry, a sweet, sweet potato, potato casserole pie. Right. So we it was didn't, like, yeah, we didn't make a full blown sweet, potato, sweet potato, casserole. potato casserole. So I made a sweet potato casserole filling and put it in a pie crust and baked it. Yeah. That was yummy. I, the kids were a little weirded out by the pineapple. I thought it was you know homey and good. Yeah. So it was just you didn't sweeten the the, the sweet film. potatoes. No, no, I didn't sweeten the sweet potatoes. And I I just had a pineapple, uh, egg and cream, right? And then um, put in a pie crust, 
and baked marshmallows. It. Well, I baked it until it was set, and then I put marshmallows on to brown. And browned them. Mm-hmm. It was really good. I um, thought it was lovely. And it was not overly sweet. So no, no, it was not. But then you made another tray of that, and the kids like picked all the marshmallows off. <laughs> one particular child scraped every one, marshmallow off the top. One child. And, uh, the child who doesn't ever pass the marshmallow test. Nope, never does. Never <laughs> has never passed the marshmallow test once. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that happened. Uh, oh, I also made a. Uh, you know what? I'm a little ticked. I didn't even get to taste the pear cranberry strudel. <laughs> oh, I didn't I made either. This, I made this huge pear cranberry I strudel. I didn't either. They ate it all. Every bite. Yeah. Of it. Okay. So the pear cranberry. Sc- I didn't get any of that at all. No, I think it was good. <laughs> I'm sure it was good. <laughs> well, just judging from the response. Vanish. Vanish, I guess it was good. Right. The, um, okay, so that, so was, that dessert. was dessert day. That was dessert day. Anything else you made? Um, oh, I think that's it, because I had the two pies. Cranberry sauce. Oh, I made a cranberry sauce. But I, was, I actually relish. made the cranberry relish. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, the orange yeah. and sugar and cranberries. And that was, you know, that was wiped out, I think... Right. Before dinner, uh, like, as dinner started, we finished it off. Well, you put it on the table before we s- well, served everything, and they just sort of went at it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I noticed, <laughs> I've noticed in years past, yeah. it gets lost on the dinner table on the buffet table. Okay. And people forget to eat it. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, this, what's this fermenting in the back of the fridge? Uh, <laughs> so I just put it out, and people, yeah. and people just went for it and ate it all. Okay, so then the next day, Wednesday was side day. Sides. Yeah. And that was... That was kind of epic. So we started with uh, um, making uh, mushroom leek soup, like a cream of mushroom, cream of leek soup. Yeah, leeks from the... We're leeks. still harvesting leeks. From our garden. From our kitchen garden. Yeah. Now, the kitchen garden has been a screaming success. Just marvelous. Yeah. And well, uh, not every not everything in it has been a success, oh, no, but we grew itself. such a variety of things that right. some of them... I'm, I'm amazed that we're... I mean, you told me this would happen, but I'm amazed that we're still harvesting leeks, and it's been well below freezing numerous times. Oh, leeks know? and some of the greens, too. Yeah. Still, still kicking it strong. Still kicking yeah. it. Um, and we'll probably do so... It, the leeks, you notice how deep their root system is and how deep you have to dig to get them out? Right. Um, they'll be fine even if they freeze on top. Right. Um, many other things, though... They'll look a little worse for wear but but yeah but they'll make it so we may still we may leave some to harvest before christmas i would personally yeah the uh but there's some other things that will not make it once the ground freezes itself yeah Yeah. so we have a bit bit of time yet probably till december for a number of things out of the garden yeah but so that so uh wednesday started with making uh a pot of uh leek cream of leek cream of mushroom soup because i wanted a cream soup to put into the blanched green beans to make green bean casserole yeah and so i just sauteed some green beans sauteed some blanched green beans with bacon yep and then um put them in a pan covered them with cream soup and then baked it and set it aside for the uh onion treatment the next day well we tested a little bit oh we did we we, uh, we actually had a couple of bowls of the soup and it was very good it was and then the sort of like base for the cream soup, which was a puree of mushrooms, leeks, and garlic. Yes. I used to saute in the sausage for sausage and clam stuffing. Right. So it's kind of what full New England. Yeah. Like, you know, seafood in your stuffing is a New England thing. I don't know who else does that, but we do. I went out, well, we haven't typically, but we did this No, I, I was feeling nostalgic this year. Right. So now I went out and I harvested what herbs I could without yeah. killing the plants because some of the things have still been growing quite still a growing. bit. So I harvested like at least a couple cups of sage leaves. Right. I think we had all told about four cups of herbs. Yeah, a bunch of parsley. A bunch of parsley. A lot of parsley. Mm-hmm. And uh, some uh, thyme, a little thyme, a little rosemary, a little oregano. But mostly sage and parsley. Yeah, mostly sage and parsley. And then... We just uh, so that basically some... threw whole sprigs and leaves mm-hmm. removed from their stems right. into the stuffing. Mm-hmm. And, and next year, if we do the same thing again, I want to use twice as much twice sage as much. leaves. It was right? marvelous. It was really, really good. good flavor. Um, yeah, there's no downsides to the stuffing, i got to say. Yeah. Because then we added uh, the croutons, um, a bit of broth, broth egg, and milk. Beef broth. Beef broth. Stirred it all up, baked it, and the 
and this was gorgeous. We didn't get it. We weren't able to store it well, so we didn't get to eat it all. Right. But um, oh, it was yeah. so gorgeous. We had these um, hollowed up pumpkins. We stuffed them with the stuffing, and they were beautiful. Yep. Yeah. And so, the stuffing was I just... I mean, that was almost kind of a main dish thing. It really was. it was presented like a main Presen dish. And, and you know what? We could have gone without... The a, a, chicken. We could have gone without the chicken and had that as the main dish. Yeah. It was that sort of spectacular and lovely. We've done flavorful. that before. We've actually had... Vegetarian so Thanksgiving. So we ate the Tofurkeys... Yeah. We ate the Tofurkeys um, before Thanksgiving. In the lead-up, yeah. Right. Uh, well, this is like, one thing I learned from my parents. It's a bi actually a big deal for Thanksgiving. Yeah. You have to plan food to eat while you're cooking. While you're cooking. <laughs> because you can't right. also, yeah. you know... So it makes separate meals. Make separate meals. So it has to be integrated into your cooking. Right. Some kind of a plan for stuff for people to eat. Because the kids are going to be full of people looking for food. They will smell it and come look it. Right. So... So this was like warm up Thanksgiving. Right. We had the furkies. Oh, and yeah. the, the, the I made my parents traditional uh, this pre Thanksgiving. It's going to be really loud. Sorry. Sorry about that, guys. But we're, you know, here we are. This is our lives. Um, There's a guy driving a little uh, bobcat. The. Um, so the thing my parents did. As uh, veteran gardeners, the thing I posted to my mom's group was that my dad basically had a victory garden since World War II until about six days before he died. Right. Um, that right. Usually every November, they were pulling in the last of their garden in November. They would do like the road covers and the like season extenders and everything. Yeah. So they'd be pulling in the last of the green tomatoes, some uh -huh. tomatoes they'd been coaxing along to ripen with some apples, stuff like that. The first and second week in November. We didn't quite make it we there were with that tomatoes. Space. No. But, uh, but what that meant was every, like the Monday before Thanksgiving, they would take all that garden produce, uh -huh. all that summer produce, yeah. and make a huge ratatouille. Yeah. So the last of all the basil that they'd, like, you know, c curled away next to the house or brought into the kitchen. So, the, so it didn't freeze. So it didn't freeze. The last of the tomatoes, the last of the squash and the eggplant um, and the peppers, all that stuff trimmed, thrown into a huge, like our electric cooker, Yeah. like they'd make that full of ratatouille on Monday. Wow. And then if uh, we were hungry, we were supposed to go eat ratatouille, right. bread, and then leave, right. leave, leave your leave, parents alone. Leave them alone and go eat the ratatouille. <laughs> right. So, um, so, so that, we had that, but we didn't have enough to go for days. We didn't but. have enough to go for days, but we made, I did make a big ratatouille, and we more or less served it two nights in a row. Yeah. Um, and and because it's a good idea, you know? It was very nice. Yeah. Filling, a uh, nice meal. It doesn't feel, but now mind you, my parents always did that because, like, we're not just going to throw hot dogs at the kids or something, right? Right. Although our kids loved it when I threw hot dogs at them. Right, finally we're like, oh, we just eat some hot just dogs. Just eat some hot dogs. I'm like, yes! Yes! <laughs> what were the other sides? Um, the other sides, um, oh, so there was the stuffing, the um, green bean casserole. Oh, creamed collards that were actually kale. Yeah, we couldn't because get collards there were, anywhere. There were no collards to be found. Really a shame. <laughs> really a shame. But, you know, kale's pretty good. Yeah. And actually, I, t I had the last of it yesterday. And it, it was good, yeah. It was good. It was really good. Um, so, cream collard. There was the sweet potato casserole that had the top uh, eaten off, eaten of, off it. of it. <laughs> uh, green bean casserole. Um, oh, mashed potatoes and gravy. Of course. There's no... And I think the number is 12 pounds of mashed potatoes. 12 pounds of mashed potatoes. Two quarts of gravy. Two quarts of gravy. And that, that was enough... That was enough. So the we gravy had more leeks and stuff. And yeah, so. yeah. That was the last of that sort of soup, right? Like so, not soup-ish. Like I made it. I made a base. Yeah. That went into all these things. Right. So the base became soup, became stuffing, became right. um, the um, um, gravy. That was great. Let's do that again. <laughs> we should do that again. Yeah. So basically, mushrooms, garlic, and, and leeks. Yeah. Just marvelous. Really, sort of. Um, I want to say meaty flavor. Just. Yeah. Oh, really very hearty. savory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then. Um, Oh, what else was there? I think there were five. Wasn't there five side dishes? I, well, there was the green bean casserole you green, mentioned. Green bean, two green, two... Oh, mac and cheese. I didn't make it. Oh, right. We bought a mac and cheese and stuck it in the oven. <laughs> From uh, GFS. From GFS. And uh, now right. the mac and cheese was actually really mediocre on Thanksgiving. It's too bad. It yeah. was very it, mediocre. I thought it, we've gotten better ones from them Yeah, it was kind of... Well, actually, you know, the ones that are, that are really good that we get yeah. are from Costco. Oh, yeah. They're like, a half, they're half the size. And they're better, yeah. Yeah, but they taste better. But now, mind you... This was mainly for a few of the picky eaters who just want starch. They just want know. starch and carbs, you know. And, uh, well, you know, 
it's a comfort food. This is a comfort time of year. Right. I, I get it. Right. Um, but that that ma that uh, mac and cheese was really good. Like two or three days later. Oh yeah, it. after it it's sat great. and like. I don't know what happened. The cheese aged some more or something. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you got, you got br finally got browned enough. Uh, yeah. I don't know. But, but it was it was better. It was, it was better. Yeah. After it sat for a bit. Yeah, that so, had Gruyere on it. So it did. So yeah. So mac. So mac and cheese, mashed potatoes, um, sweet potato casserole, green bean casserole, and creamed collards with five sides, three desserts, uh, plus a few extras for the other days, and then the main dish of fried chicken. Yeah. Oh, we also made some appetizers. The, oh, yeah, the appetizers. So we made a vegan... These are mostly made on the day. But Yeah, yeah. And, and just kind of... Um, sort of half made on the, the side day and then finished on the day. Yeah. So uh, bacon-wrapped Brussels sprouts. You prepped them the day, the yeah, side they, day. Right, the side day. And they are extremely easy. You take a bacon... You take a Brussels sprout and you wrap it in bacon. And, and then you bake it. And then you bake it. Yeah. And, like, you don't even broil it. Like, you bake it for, like, 3.15 until it's done. Okay. Um, and then there Those was, were very tasty. They're like candy. Yes, and Josh was like, "That changed my life, Mom." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other appetizer was uh, a vegan port wine cheese ball. Yeah. You weren't sold on it. I kind of loved it. I. Uh, it was okay. My only I ate some. I, my complaint is that it was too salty. Okay. I would like it to be less salty. But it was that, made I, of cashews. Primarily cashews, and then miso paste. Some, um, He's so extremely salty. So. Yeah, yeah. And then some, um, what is it? Oh, sun-dried tomatoes and, oh, nutritional yeast. I, so I liked it. That it was, was okay. It, I, I would have rather had uh, traditional cheese. Oh, yeah. But, uh, well, you know, that's it, okay. If you look at, if you're served something that says cheese and you're expecting cheese, <laughs> um, there's no vegan thing that will be cheese. Right? No, no. So and that, Although, I think like okay. I said, the vegan cheesecake actually, I I I, I thought it was pretty good. So yeah, so the yeah, um, I didn't really miss the cheese per se in that dish at least. Right. So, um, but I was feeling very nostalgic for a port wine cheese ball. Yeah, That's how I knew I was fancy when I was little. Right, <laughs> my mom used to. I don't know. Did she make them or did she buy them? I think yeah, you she know, may have bought them. A little both, I'd say. And then I'm trying to remember what my mom did. We did have port wine cheese balls. Right. And then we had deviled eggs. I th yeah, she she got the cheese pre-made in like a tub, mm -hmm. and like rolled, rolled it, it up and did that stuff. Right. Yeah, my, my mom liked to roll it the cons. Yeah, yeah, that was delicious. So so we had the cheese ball, we had the deviled eggs, and oh, the deviled bacon eggs. wrapped yeah. uh, Brussels. That? So right. all around very good. And then they ate I the ate appetizers while eggs. frying chicken for two days, three days. Right. Um, and so while I was frying, they ate the appetizers, then we put the meal out. And we had a, there's a cadre of folks that would normally join us for Thanksgiving. And since we weren't doing that this year, I packed up a few a to few go back. A few items for a couple folks. Right. Yeah, and, and ran, some, ran some food out to some friends who couldn't be at our table. Yeah, so... We set up the table nice. We, we did. put on the, the tablecloth. We got the fiesta wear up. And mm -hmm. so had a sort of color... Uh, colliding assortment of fiesta wear, which is always a always pleasure. Fi festive, <laughs> festive fiesta wear. And um, we had a bottle of wine. Just Very good. we would have had three, three wines of, wine. if, of different types if we had more people there. Right, and had a had a first course, second course. Because I've right. I've fallen into this philosophy of not trying to dictate whether people should have red or white or rosé or whatever on Thanksgiving we just served like three wines three wines three, three good wines that's enough yeah well actually we did three three not dessert wines and then a dessert wine last mm. year yeah I that think. was really good that was really good yeah it was but great. the wine we if I have to drink one wine with Thanksgiving food mm -hmm. I will choose a Beaujolais oh yeah and it, it is you know it's like really red with yeah, it's yeah, red, really. but it's not that. It's not. It's not that heavy. It's not that heavy. It's not that like uh, leathery, you know, or mm -hmm. or, or it's not oaky yeah, it's not, yeah. because it's quite a fresh flavor. Fresh. Uh, so turn it around. Yeah. Okay. Uh oh. We're switching sides. Yeah, you're on the wrong side. Sorry. So, uh, sorry for disorient everyone. Oops. <laughs> It's my, it was my idea. I did it. It was me. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, this is just a, a medium, like a, a, a generic uh, 
I mean, it wasn't really generic, but I forget the type. Forget but it's a, Beau, a Beaujolais, Beaujolais, 2018 Beaujolais. It was, and it was good. Very good with with yeah. the Thanksgiving food, I think. Yeah, no, I enjoyed it. The variety of stuff that involves earthier flavors like mushrooms and garlic and whatnot. Mm-hmm. That I think the only thing I regret was we didn't have a chilled bottle of uh, Michigan White. Oh, Michigan, yeah. Like the... The, uh, the, the Riesling? Yeah, that this, been a nice this semi-dry Riesling That's to a, have with the desserts. Yeah, that, that was a great finish. That's always a... Always a winner. A winner. Yeah. The, um, but, uh, but no, it was a good meal, and we took a break and had our desserts. It was... It was a good day. Only one good. person threw up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. After dinner, the kids, like, I kept telling them, Josh, sit upright. Just sit upright. Pace don't yourself. Rock Pace yourself. Stay upright. No, no, don't. No wrestling. No, wrestling, no, no fist fights. No wrestling. Oh, don't jump on his belly. Oh, he's running to the bathroom to throw up. Oh. Okay. Well, okay, well, you know, no one has to listen to me. It's not like I know anything. No, I, in fact, we know nothing, Paul. That's, what, that's the one <sighs> thing I've concluded. The one thing I know is I know nothing. Like Socrates. But yes, that's really, I've, I've explored, I've searched, I've concluded one thing only. Well, there's, I know nothing. The, you just hope that, oh, maybe next year he'll like remember that he shouldn't be <laughs> Greco Roman wrestling immediately yeah, after, after eating, you know. Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, a huge, rich meal. Right. Where you've been like, eating for the last four hours. Pace yourself. Like, take a little break. Take a break. You know? Just relax. Watch the movie. Watch the movie. So we put on. I'm really we sort of lost track of what our what our holiday movies our are. holiday movie traditions are because you know we've, we've been watching movies all the time this year, right? So we don't even know because like usually we're like hungry for it, like oh it's time right. for. I mean, you know. because we traditionally watched Lord of the Rings New trilogy Year's. for New Year's for New Year's or for Christmas for New Year's, and we were trying to do The Hobbit for Christmas, but it sucks really hard. Yeah, it's a really it's the, terrible uh, so. Yeah, so we tried it for a while to add like the Hobbit trilogy for Christmas, yeah, but not so I much. had the extended editions, and they're bad. They're awful. They're just bad, you know. So uh, yeah, why, why would the Hobbit be an R-rated film? Well, <laughs> the, <laughs> that's the extended gonna, why would the edition Hobbit of the third Hobbit movie be an R-rated film? Has so many de- gory decapitations and blood spray that it's rated R. I like wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Beloved children's, <laughs> beloved children's beloved hundred and twenty page children's book. Nine hours Fil- long filled rated with, R. <laughs> yeah, with love triangle and uh, just some just all this bizarre. All these characters brought back in who don't even belong in the story. Right. Yeah. No, it's just it was it's awful. So so we deep six that. Oh, this but, one's Oh, it's almost nice. We're looking at a house going up. Yeah, yeah. Well I always feel hope for people, you know? And oh, they have a metal roof. They have a metal and a porch. Nice. Oh, that's cool. The um. So you know, we may maybe we'll put the the regular length trilogy on. Maybe we'll try that. But the uh, but no, we do night, Nightmare Before Christmas is Halloween. Yeah. Lord of the Rings is New Year's, and okay. then we I we had something for Thanksgiving and I forget what it was now. I'm really disoriented this year, you know. Yeah. Well, everything's weird. And uh, and we were. I always want to watch Die Hard for Christmas, and you never want to show the kids. That's really yeah, we what we don't even own a copy. So see that's what that's see that's what's wrong with our lives. <laughs> we don't even have a copy of Die Hard. Okay, I'm a, I'll order a copy of Die Hard for Christmas. I think this is the year. But we're not watching the Lethal Weapon series. Oh come on! <laughs> our kids are traumatized enough. Although you know what? So I've been wanting to watch with people and you did watch a couple of them with me yeah the Zatoichi films yeah, those the are Blind great. Swordsman well the first one especially the, was a transcendent film the first one is so good it's really a shame to me that it's so little known and almost forgotten it's black and white but I mean it is every bit as good as some of Kurosawa's famed oh right right you know Drama is set in the same period. It's mm-hmm. just, it's a terrific film. The acting is amazing. Yeah. The the uh, cinematography, the sets, is, the staging, yeah. all very good. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's just a really, it's a well crafted story. Really is. Um, they're not all that good. No. Um, there are still. Some of them are pretty cheesy. There are still some that are very good. Yes. Uh, 
there, like I watched one uh, Zatoichi and the Doomed Man is a really good story. Mm -hmm. You know, they get better and worse. Oh, the and the, the Zatoichi goes to the fire festival is like the most amazing, has the mm -hmm. most amazing <laughs> graphical fight scenes I've right? pretty much ever seen. Anyway, so. yeah, yeah. So we've been watching these martial arts films too. And that's been fun, right? But you know, they're not martial arts film like the way that. Uh, oh, like um, what's the one? The, the Jackie one? Chan not Jackie or Chan. Bruce Lee? No. Nope. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. They're not like that. No, not like that. I like that series. That stuff is oh, great. Oh, that's so transcendent too. Whew. Man, that's some good stuff. But the uh, Satoichi films are—they're more like, um, you know, crime dramas, right? With uh, mm -hmm. vigilante. It's kind of like, and of course it inspired things like Kung Fu, the TV show. Yes. It's yes. a little more like that, where uh -huh. Satoichi comes into a town and, you know... It's a little bit Mad Max. He Which writes... A right, little tiny bit, right. right? Which also, that series also took... Took a lot from Satoichi. That, from that genre, because... Right. There are others, many other series. I mean, there some people have kind of cataloged them, but like in the from the '60s through the '80s, there are thousands of these, like Edo period, uh, martial drama kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but yeah, and they're not all great, you know. Right. No. Yeah. There's, there's but uh, this is one of the. I got this uh, used Blu-ray set. Right. On eBay, it's a Criterion release. It has of 25 films. It's uh, it's on nine Blu-ray discs, and mm -hmm. it is my favorite box set. It's so gorgeous. The artwork. It, yeah, no, it's a it's a beautiful artifact as well as film. Yeah, yeah. So one of the f best things I ever added yeah. to our movie collection. Yeah. No, no, good find. I still haven't. I mean, I haven't even come close to seeing all of them. I've probably watched ten of well, them. Well, there's what? There's twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. It'll, take, it'll take a little t doing. But it brings up like it's really hard just to to concentrate on a film in our house, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, it really is. It's you know, how how'd you put it? Like, uh, I don't know. Maybe I was saying that you know, my life with with one child it was like. You know, a library compared to, uh, uh, or a monastery compared to right. life with seven children right. doing their thing all day every day. Right. So you got to get used to like trying to follow the story and stay in the story while being interrupted at least once every two or three minutes. Right. You know, by someone screaming or someone getting into something or someone having a fight or someone wandering off or someone, you know, blah, blah, blah. On it goes. But it's really, it's a challenge. To the 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 we now have a we set up the screen in our bedroom. Yep, the big fragile screen. The big screen in our bedroom. So we have a locked room where we can Grace and I can watch movies now yep. at night. The only problem being, by the time we get in and it's quiet. reasonably quiet, we're falling asleep, asleep ourselves. ourselves. So yeah, but, there's that. But we've we've been watching Columbo. Yeah, boy. <laughs> I have a. I uh, forgot how good it was. I loved that show. I have a boxed set of all ten seasons of, oh. of Columbo on DVD, and right. the, the transfers aren't great, and they're not that oh, great the resolution. the stories hold up. The stories are cool. They're oh, mostly really stories. good. They're not all fantastic, but, but they're mostly all, really good. There are many of them that are still very good. Right. Well, and, and this is what gets me, right? This is like 40 years later, okay? Yeah, this is yeah. decades later. I get to the high point, the, 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 the climax, dramatic climax, the dramatic climax right. and I'm like, my heart's racing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. She's really into it. <laughs> like, you know, Columbo's going to like step out pounce. and, and accuse the, like... The murderer, right? Now, right. And the thing that's funny about Columbo, if you don't remember this... Yes. I already know who did it. I right, already know right. how. I know what's happening. No, it's it's actually, it's not really... A who done it? It's a how did it? It's a how did it? Right. Yeah. It's a, it is it. Um, Columbo. The whole series started out. It was with the single movie, which became the first pilot. Right. Which was like prescription murder or something like that mm -hmm. with the doctor. Mm hmm And um, that ran as a play. Yes. That developed the 
character. Yes. Right. And then they recruited <laughs> Peter Falk, Falk for the first one. If you watch the first one, the character isn't. He's not there yet. He's not quite come into focus as a as a half comic, you know. Half comic. Um, like all his incisive. He's like a proto uh, monk, honestly. Kind of all his all his various ticks and whatnot, and yeah. like the, the things he does to, like his habitual things he does to basically annoy annoy the murderer <laughs> until, into confessing until they either confess or, or they give let, it away. They let enough slip that it's you know. Is the only one. And yeah. every like casual conversation, you know, his his trademark line was. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry to bother you, you, but I just have a... He pulls out his little note. I just have one more question. A couple of questions. You said this little insignificant little detail. detail, but I just wanted to know if... Uh, Did you really mean that? Yeah, because... Because uh, that couldn't have happened before the gunshots. Because that couldn't have happened because the solstice falls at 8, you know... <laughs> at 8.45. Right. That could never happen, I'm just saying. Or whatever. Right. And then you just watch the... Their eyes dart nervously back and forth. Right, they're, they're, like their face, their expression. The, the, the expression, expression the goes face. stony and their eyes are darting around and they're struggling to... And you've got to give it up for the actors who <laughs> play the murderers, so right? Good. Because they do this thing without, without their face. Bursting, just like, bursting out laughing. Right? <laughs> Although that's one of the ways you knew that Columbus, Columbo, Columbo was getting close with the one last night which had from 1971 or 72 had Leslie Nielsen, Nielsen in it, it. yes but the female lead uh, the murderer um, at, she started to get really pissed at him right right so really angry. of his habit of but also you know <laughs> it is it is like a cab in the sense that yeah no he's total bastard <laughs> he's, he is a bastard like he's He's kind of malicious. Just walk in these people's and you, houses. Can't you can't just, just do this. You can't just like go into their homes and cars without warrants without and without warrants you or anything. Know. Just like start snooping around and like crawling up, right. like shoving the guy's house. You know, right? It's ridiculous. Right. So he's he does a lot of stuff which uh, Is, a jury really should throw, should throw out. out. And, just discard all together and potentially discipline him for, for misconduct. Just you know, outrageous misconduct. Right. But, you know, it's a fun show. Especially in the first one, he's pretty aggressive. He's very aggressive. He just with that whole thing. That right. whole, like, you know... Right. But, um, I mean, aggressive questioning and yes. whatnot. And, yes. And you're like... you're. I mean, you're starting to root for the murderer because, like, dude, you need to shut up and get an attorney. Get an attorney. <laughs> Call your... T- <laughs> <laughs> right, the whole time. It's yeah. ridiculous. He becomes much more sympathetic in the later ones. And, you know, these are murderers, well, right? Well, first of all, they're murderers. The audience knows they're murderers, right. and they're all rich bastards. <laughs> <laughs> so it really is a leftist portrayal in many in many right, ways. Right, right. So that's why that's why he gets to be a bastard, right? Right. In in the right. in the viewers' he's eyes, bringing down he's the, bringing the powerful wealthy, who kill right. literally murdered with what they thought was impunity. impunity. Right. Right. Who took human lives with impunity? He's bringing them low, and that's right. the reason the viewer can like just not be outraged. Even if the people they killed needed killing, <laughs> they needed killing though. <laughs> needed killing. Yeah. Like, what was that one? The guy, um, like basically, like broke this woman's neck because he was trying to blackmail her, and she was like, "No, I'm just gonna tell. Like, you right. can't blackmail me. Right. I'm just gonna tell my husband I was having an affair." Right. And he's like, "Ah." Yes. He no, snapped. some of them are pretty. They do a lot of stuff with arty soft fades and music and like oh, yeah. and like uh, there there's a famous sequence in one we watched we're still in season one, you know, right. with one we watched early on where a bunch of the events of the like of the murder you see them reflected in the main character's uh, sunglasses. glasses, sunglasses right. Right. as his face is frozen, right? Right, right. like he's stony faced. And then you see the events unfold. Because it was essentially, like, all the action has to be what would essentially now be PG-rated, yes. you know. Yes, or even... Even G, even honestly. Because yeah, there's nothing graphic. No, there's nothing not very all. graphic. Nothing bloody. Right. Right. Actually, the one where, where the, the woman kills her brother. Yeah. Last night, that... that it, was start, it was a little startling. It's it more, was, more graphic than you usually get. Right. Yeah, for a Columbo, but mm-hmm. yeah, there's so much fun to watch. And I, you know, I, I did see these occasionally as a kid. 
I, I couldn't. I, you know, like, I didn't know enough about the world and these people and characters and the dialogue, what was happening in the dialogue and all that to really unpack okay, what, what I was looking at. I just knew that Columbo was funny and yes. I enjoyed watching him. Right. But I didn't, like, follow along all the who all the characters the were. Character, what was going on. It, it is such a trip. Pretty much every episode, you see some famous person from the 70s. Right. Just about every episode. Right. And Leslie Nielsen, who unfortunately has a fairly small role it's in small, this one. Not very funny role. Not very funny, not that great. And you realize, like, oh, yeah. At some point, they discovered that he just was better, better in funny. comic roles because his self-seriousness is so, like... It's so comic. Unconvincing. It's unconvincing. <laughs> like, he's comic when he's trying to be serious. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's not trying to be comic. No, he's just, he just, he's just there. He just, like... He just His like acting that. skills do not work that well for serious roles, but it's much funnier to see him in a in a setup that's comedic. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So... I don't know. He probably he was he was uh, seventy one or seventy two. Yeah. That was a long time before the Naked Gun stories Naked and Gun whatnot. Along. But and he did not look uh, he did not look one day younger than Naked Gun. Not much. No, no he did not. Like his hair was a little his longer. Face is a little. That was about it. A little fuller, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But like his hair was still white. Had white hair. It was longer. Yeah. 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 No. My goodness. Although some of these, you see that these folks, and they're, you know, 30 years younger than you last remember them. It's just concerning. And it's like, whoa, yeah. whoa. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're not working through them on any kind of a schedule. Oh, just no, we're just having a good time. Very slowly, when, whenever we get a, a little quiet time, we'll put on a Columbo. So we also watched. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some of the Mad Max films, which yeah. I've never seen. So, Thunderdome is terrible. <laughs> just, just if any of you are thinking about maybe pulling that out again, it was terrible. <laughs> oh my gosh! Just, whew. I, I never saw Thunderdome back in the day. I, I did, and I didn't remember. I thought that it would be better because it was a pretty big budget film with yeah, like no. a big name, you know, big name lady, but no, big name guest star. Yeah, no, not too much. Um, Fury Road was far. Well, let's let's yeah. talk about Thunderdome a little more first. So, sure. Thunderdome is almost like a film within a film. Yeah. Because there's this whole section in uh, Fart Town or whatever it's called, where they they Barter Town, Barter Town, where they power everything by fermenting pig feces to make methane. To make methane. To- to create, to ultimately to burn, to make electricity. Right. So it's their fuel for, for electricity. Right, and there's a the the king of Fart Town is uh, Farter Town is sorry <laughs> is uh, 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 pig fart is on Mars. A, <laughs> is that a who culture? Then? I hope. Uh, uh, is sorry. Is, well, uh, is um what? Tina Turner. No, the 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 crime boss that's running the place. Not Tina Turner. That's Master Blaster. Master Blaster. Okay, yeah, yeah. Master Blaster is two people, and they they actually they just run the refinery. They run the refinery, but they also are kind of in charge. Well, because they run the refinery. Because they have control of the refinery. Right. But and, Tina Turner has the control of the town. Right. And they're sort of they have a, they have a bit of a truce. Yeah. But the Master Blaster is pushing pushing those boundaries for right. Tina Turner. Master Blaster is this big guy in a, like a mask, mask and, helmet. and armor and everything. He's like I don't know, eight feet tall or something. Some ridiculous. huge, yeah. Just and ridiculous. then Blaster or Mas- that's Blaster. That's Blaster. Master, Master is a little person uh, that, who's like the sort of cackling, cackling dwarf genius. Right. The, you know, and Blaster carries Master together. Around Master on his Blaster. shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. It's as silly as, as it sounds. It's really silly. And then, of course, Max winds up in the Thunderdome having a fight to the death with... Master. Or with Blaster. Blaster. While Master watches on. And the, the Thunderdome is a giant jungle steel cage. gym. It's a steel cage. It's a steel cage match. <laughs> uh, but the part that I didn't expect, which makes it unexpectedly funny, is that they're on bungee cords, right? <laughs> they're suspended from the ceiling of the dome... Yep. By these big, like, 
not really bungee cords, but big uh, straps. straps and whatnot. Like, right. and so it's like an acrobatic act. They're flipping over flipping and around, trying flying to flying around and trying to get the <laughs> advantage. And actually, you're in danger if you lose your cords because now they can like come at you from behind and right, the edge. right. It's, so yeah, so it's quite a, it's a very graphic fight scene. They have to pluck weapons from different places oh, around the dome, no. including at one point a chainsaw, chainsaw. Right? <laughs> which won't run because there's no gas. Because they had like a teaspoon of gas. gasoline in it. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, gas is hard to come by. Yeah. Right, so it's it's quite comical to see them like doing this high wire acrobatics act, flipping around. Well, I think that's the thing you're, you're hitting on. It's unintentionally comic. It's really funny, but right. it's not supposed to be. Right, right. So. Yeah, so it really drags. It's yeah. it's grotesque, and there are some beautiful scenes and all that, but it really drags. Then the film within a film is when um, he Max that. discovers a whole, basically a a, a, a Peter Pan like planet of lost children. Right? right. It's it's a in an oasis. It's an oasis the, hidden in the, in the middle of the desert in like this big uh, river basin thing where yeah. they've. Apparently, they are the descendants of a of a plane crash. Plane crash. And they have built up a whole. Harbor and Club. this part is kind of fascinating. It, no, this right? could this could be a good a film. A good film. The other one could be an okay film. But this could be a Together, good film. Together, they're just, just a long film. <laughs> they're just a long, nonsensical film. Right. But yeah. But no, this is interesting. They form a cargo cult, waiting for the return of the pilot to fly them back home. Right. Yeah. And they've memorized their, they have a whole oral history that they recite. Nightly and memorize and, and pass on. Right. So they'll remember and tell people what, what they're waiting right. for. Right. And so that's all pretty cool. But mm-hmm. yeah, it, then they have to go back to Fart Town and uh, it's just like. Yeah, it's just stupid. Uh, and. They almost die, so people do. It's just got Yeah. Long. So it's, it's a little long to get through. But you were saying about about the fourth one, which I had never seen, but had right. was much more highly regarded. Oh, this is it's the fourth one. Fury Road is a great action film. Oh, Fury just, Road is a, is amazing. Just straight up action. It's all day, the whole time. The whole the whole film basically comprises one very mm-hmm. long action. chase sequence. Chase scene. Right. Super right. long. It's that's primary. That's the film. Right, and it's really, it goes overnight, it goes round the clock, clock pretty much, and Max is actually a minor character Yeah. in this, in the, and we don't even see his face until like 45, 45 minutes, minutes into, into the, the film, film because yeah. he's dragged into this... He's this sucked into the events around him. Events, right, uh, with a mask clamped onto his head, and he's for, being... For no discernible reason, I think it's just a... It's just for the reveal. Yeah, right. for the reveal, right, yeah. Right, so we finally see him, and he has... He probably has only ten or fifteen speaking lines in the whole film, if Maybe that. Maybe twenty. Maybe if that. if that. But he speaks very little. Right. And um, there actually is very little exposition through the whole thing. No. We have to. So you're. It's really. You have to pay attention. And you have to pay attention. Go. But you want to pay attention because right. kind of what's happening is. Because so, you're sucked deep into the. Oh, what do you call it? The, the action. The action is so it's full on compelling. Action. That you kind of want to pay attention and pick up, like, what's happening. Mm-hmm. And there's, like, there aren't any info dumps. Nope. The closest thing is, like, one brief conversation where someone's talking about the past, right? But yes. it's very naturalistic. Very natural. It's natural so common in, like, fantasy, sci-fi, apo- post-apocalyptic, Here's the whiteboard. Let it's, me it's, explain yeah. everything. At some point, someone... Someone powers on a slide projector and you watch a PowerPoint or what? You know, so like, let me explain the backstory of the yeah, film. Yeah, right. And Here like, you go. And, you know, it's necessary, but, I mean, in most cases, unless it's worked smoothly into the action, like it is in Star Wars, where it's part of what the characters are experiencing. Right. Right. It's like pulling teeth to watch these sequences, right? Yeah, they're very tedious. Yeah, but so that, there's, there's none, just of that. none of that. None of that. And so... And you get it all. It you all, get all, everything you need. It all comes to you. You get it all. While still having a sense left, it's like, oh, there's more to know. Right? Yeah. Right. And so many films, all the premises and everything, are absolutely tissue thin and does not leave you with yeah. any sense that there's any reality to this world. No. Right. Well, whereas Fury Road felt 
strangely close at hand. Yes. You know? Yeah. And the other thing about the film is that almost all the stunt work and everything and explosions and cars and all that is entirely done with real vehicles, practical effects, real stunt people, mm -hmm. very little CGI. It's there, but right, yeah. it doesn't jump out at you like it does in a lot of films. Right. Except in, only in one scene was there were like, oh, that's CGI. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, and uh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Right. No. no. Like the every the the fight scenes and whatnot the dust are storm. The dust storms they're shot at an accelerated frame rate in very very high resolution digital cameras. Um, the accelerated frame rate makes everything like hyper real, kind of like the mm -hmm. Matrix bullet time stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And during the day, the palette is always this ochres and brilliant oranges and yellows, yeah. and then. The night scenes, which actually were shot in daylight, but yeah. um, are everything is these like rich, rich blues. blues and purples, browns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a gorgeous Very film. Compelling. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, it's gory as hell. No, it, no, it's very gory. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely not gory. for kids. Not for kids. May, some adults may not. Eighteen. It. Yeah, some. Yeah. Sensitive adults probably don't even want to watch. Don't want to watch this film. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty rough in spots. And this is something I, something I've got to say about the Mad Max franchise, all four movies. Yeah, they have this thing where they kill off children yeah. and vulnerable people, and go ahead and like, and not like hand out or anything. They kill them on screen. Right. They're not going to joke about it. They're not going to pull punches on it. Right. And it's hard to watch. That's not common in most American cinema. No, it's not. No. If you're going to kill someone, like an elderly person, or a child, or an infant, right. a pregnant woman, you do that off screen, you hint right. at it, you suggest right. it, you know, and then you have someone confirm it no. later in hushed tones. And this no. one, just as like a trigger warning, there's like yeah. a pregnant woman who dies, and Under, then they attempt yeah. to do, an, uh, a C do a C-section and rescue the baby, and the baby is also dead. On screen. <laughs> on screen. Right, this is not... It's not sugar coated in any way. Yeah. So that's something you may want to be aware of, and that's actually all of Mad Max is like that. Right. I didn't. Right. I did not pick up on that as a ten or eleven year old kid. No. No. Um, but it was clearly there. Yeah. And. Um, well, like I said, I never saw Thunderdome. I think I only ever saw the second one because mm -hmm. the first one is is the first one is just a weird ass cult film, very yeah. low budget cult film. It's interesting, but it's like the seeds. It only was ever going to be ever a cult film, a cult film. yeah. Um, because it's just it's too like it's not all there, you know. Too freaky, too weird, and uh, it's not all there. <laughs> it's not all there in the sets and character development right, and right. locations and stuff like that. But it's like a if you took Clockwork Orange and made a very very low budget version, like put together by high school students. That's right. the first Mad Max. Yeah. 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 No, it's it's a bit much. So the um, or not not that much to be honest. Yeah. Um, but they all have that theme where they're right, really right. They're going to be cruel in this way, and I think they're doing it on purpose. Sure. Right. For for well, it's for supposed to be post-apocalyptic dystopian. Yes. And they're serious. About and they're going that. all the way. With it, so yeah. So that's there. Be warned. Right. Um, but you know, if you like an action film, and I do, I'm really I'm here for action films. Um, Fury Road is it, man. Yeah, it's really good. Whew. Enjoyed it a lot. Um, we still, we have to watch the second one. Yeah, we, we still did. haven't watched the second one. Mm -hmm. but yeah, Mel Gibson is so. Uh, Fury Road does not star Mel Gibson. Yeah, it stars this other Tom guy, Tom Hardy, Tom Hardy yeah. who, amusingly enough, we just watched recently in, in, a, Venom. in a movie called Venom. Yep. Um, He's fun he's in not, both. He's fun in both. He's good in both. He's not funny in. <laughs> oh, he's not funny in Fury Road. At all. In Fury Road at all. Yeah. Right. No, so, no, it's not funny. So, yeah, none of I mean, it's that one line that's been memed, which, okay. which is kind of funny. That's a trap. After the meme. <laughs> right. That's, that's, bait. that's bait. That's bait. That's bait. It's not funny in context. It's not funny it's in context. Serious. Right. It, but, like, seeing the meme on screen is funny. Right, right. That, that's kind of why I wanted to watch it, because there are a lot of memes from Fury Road, mm -hmm. including the guy who's playing it. Is like strapped to the front of a giant big rig playing this like electric guitar Power that's flamed. also a flamethrower. You know, I wanted to. Look, it's totally this nuts. is like this giant amplifier. Is like, what? I wanted to. I wanted to see the movie that that came from. <laughs> What's going on in that scene? Oh, it's, not much. It's every bit as funny. Well, as impressive and ridiculous as ridiculous. Yes. 
Yeah. As it seems like it is. Um, right. The um, one criticism of Fury Road. Okay. As much as I enjoy it, one criticism. Um, there are several disabled characters played by able-bodied actors. That bothers me. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, there are disabled actors who could have played right. those roles well, and done a fantastic job. One of them is. So the the lead. The lead character, famous lady. Furiosa. Yeah. Um. I forget well, the I famous forget the actress. Sorry. I forget the famous actress's name, but she's um, a famous actress. They um, wanted her Charisse for it. Sh- yeah, Charlize. Charlize. Sh- I, I don't. I don't really. Charlize. Know. Charlize Theron. Theron. Okay, Theron. Right. Sorry. She has a uh, a hand missing. It, the character does. The character does. Right. So this was done using like a sort of a synthetic hand and some CGI. Mm-hmm. To like paint out her actual form to make it look like it's just uh, a stump. wires and, and well, no, metal. she actually has a stump and she, tra- she straps it on a prosthetic. Yeah, right. So, so you see, I mean, the, the prosthetic is like these metal pieces you can see through it. Right. So to make that look real, is they paint there out was some CGI to right. paint out the whatever her actual form, her actual arm. Right. So, but yeah, that you don't see it very often, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a nice detail, but I guess you could make the case they could have just they could have just hired well a disabled actress. But her character is so intense in this film. It's I mean there aren't that many people who are film actors and actresses who can play at that level of. Well, maybe if we hired them, there would be. Well, yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. I, I I really don't I don't buy that argument. All right. I don't buy that argument. Full stop. Because if you never cast them. Right. They never will be. Okay. There, there was but really there was no reason not to cast a really well, strong disabled actress that has an arm missing. I, I suppose, except that they, it would have been an unknown, and they're investing, you know, hundreds of million dollars, millions yeah. of dollars in a. But they they changed they changed Mad Max out in this film. They did because um, because yeah. because yeah. Mel Gibson <laughs> is canceled. It's Jesus canceled. Christ! He's a total freaking liability. He's. Oh, we're going to get the mail here. Oh, yeah. It's the mail. He is persona non grata in... And, and should be. Let's in be just, Hollywood, for good reason. Frank. He's oh, had a God. lot of second chances, a lot of... And he keeps shitting on him? And Jesus. he's just like... He's... He's not well. He's not well. You know, and I want him to get the care that he needs. I'm not sure. saying he shouldn't receive care, but my God. Sure. But, um... Uh-oh. There, go back on the other side. I'm going to confuse everyone again. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I keep forgetting where I am, what I'm doing. <laughs> Uh, okay. So, yeah, Mel Gibson's canceled. They, sw- they swapped him out. But, so, right. and I don't know, you know what, I can't remember this actress's name. I don't know how famous she was before it, and versus after it, versus what? Charlize, Charlize Theron was, was a big draw. She was a big, she was a big draw. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So, I don't know, yeah. maybe. Well, you know, it's possible. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. And, and actually, well, disability. Thomas Hardy was not nearly as well known when, no. when he made this, not Thomas Hardy, not the. <laughs> <laughs> Tess of the Durbervilles, <laughs> notwithstanding, Thomas Hardy was not as well known. No. <clears throat> Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. Um, was uh, not as well known when he did this film. He right. had done some. some I still don't work. know his name. I, I recognize his face, kind of. Right. So, so, I, so I don't know about that. But I think here's the other thing: disability was a actually a significant part of thi- the film. Part of the film. It's a significant uh, it something was. of the film. It was. And. And um, so maybe you hire one big name that plays the non-disabled characters. Yeah, yeah. And then you hire really skilled disabled. Yeah, I'm not talking okay. about hiring people who are disabled because they're disabled. Right. I'm talking about hiring skilled people to do the job. Right. To do and if the job if the if the story involves disability, which it does, hire a disabled person to do it. Yeah. So just uh, well, we're just about done here, but yeah. Um, the. The portrayal of Furiosa. It's very good. It's one of the most in your face aggressively feminist portrayals of a of a lead character yeah. I've ever seen in film. Not quite alien, but close. It almost Yeah. She's just, just shy. no shit from anybody. Yeah, no, nope, that's Absolutely hard ass woman. Uh-huh. And it it does it did remind me of Ripley in Alien, yes. right? Yes. The first Alien film. Um, 
Yeah. yeah. And so that's a, that was a beautiful thing. I really admired that. I admired and appreciated that. Yeah. So anyway, we are. Uh, I'm so glad we got a walk in. Me too. There's not much daylight left. We well, are we just it. we're counting down the days. I'm so stressed because I'm going back into a pressure cooker work at situation at the office. So many late projects, a lot of pressure on me to finish things up. Fast, fast, fast. And an awful lot of it is actually things that I can't control. I'm waiting on other people to finish. Control and manage. Especially outside the company, vendors and whatnot. But I'm the one in the hot seat here. So I'm just trying to make it through the end of the year, which is where that box of wine is going to come in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So. As we come full circle. Yeah. Okay. All right, Thanks everyone. For listening. Yeah, I was gonna. Next time, I want to talk about billionaires. Yeah. But. Uh, oh, we don't need any. Yeah. Okay. Take care, all. Yeah. Stay safe. Bye bye.